types of software, spreadsheets. Spreadsheet software allows users to create and manipulate electronic spreadsheets. In a spreadsheet application, each piece of data sits in a cell. Each sheet is a table of data arranged into rows and columns, with the rows being identified numerically and the columns being referenced alphabetically. Each piece of data can have a predefined relationship to data contained in other cells established using cell references, such as A1, B6 or CJ13. So in the case of A1, that means it is in the first column of the spreadsheet and the first row of the spreadsheet. So sitting the cell in the top left corner of my spreadsheet. And then as with B6, that would be in the second column of the spreadsheet, down six rows, that's where cell B6 is. And then CJ13 illustrating that once we get beyond the 26 letters of the alphabet, we start doubling up on letters at the front. Okay, so that's why we've got C, then J. We've gone through the whole alphabet once with A, and then AA would be the next one, and then we'd have AB and so on. So we can go really far and deep. We're not bound by a single letter at the front of our column uh, area. Now, what we've got to say here is then, if you change one value in a particular cell, you're more than likely going to see changes in other cells to which the cell is being referenced. And that's why cell references are so important. So if I put a specific formula into a specific cell in my spreadsheet that is referencing two other cells and the values within them, once I've created that formula, if I change the values in those cells, the result of my formula will automatically change. And that's one of the big powers of spreadsheet, the automation factor. So I can put in all my formulas into different cells of spreadsheet, then enter my data or change my data. Okay. And then those formulas will update instantly. And the same goes for other things such as graphs and charts. Everything updates automatically, okay? And that's where the real power of spreadsheets is. So let's start talking about some of the tools available in spreadsheets. And I've got my little mock-up of a spreadsheet here. And firstly, I'll illustrate some of those points I just mentioned now that firstly, each of my columns is named alphabetically. I've got column A, column B, and column C. And then I've got each of my rows. I've got row one, where I've got all my labels written in for number one, number two, and answer. And then rows two to five, which I've populated with data and formulas, okay? And so if I wanna specifically highlight a certain cell reference in column C, row two, that is the cell named cell C2. So that is what cell references are, that combination of the columns letter and the rows number. So firstly, I'll point out is simply formatting tools. I can color and uh, change the fonts and formats of my spreadsheet any way that suits me and the context of what I'm doing. Okay, so you can see in row one, the background color of the cells is green. And you can see in columns A and B, the text is white, but in column C it's green. And that's for a purpose, because it's more than likely that I've got formulas in row C and I want to have that standing out for emphasis. Now I've also made a mention here of conditional formatting as well, where I can make colors change based on rules I'm applying to my spreadsheet. So in column C there, I might make it that if the value is above zero, the text is going to be green. But if that value drops below zero, that text might change to the color red. Okay, and that's based on rules that I put into conditional formatting. And then, as mentioned here too, another factor I can change is my borders, as well as alignment too. So I've got a, a lot of freedom with how my spreadsheet can look. The next area I want to talk about is that power of using functions and formulas. So in the case of that cell C2, as I said, it's a formula. So while the number two is what's appearing in that spreadsheet, I haven't actually typed in two. What I've actually typed in is a function and functions make use of keywords and the keyword I've used is sum. So I've written equals sum of A2 dot dot B2. So it's adding whatever's in cell A2 to whatever's in cell B2. And the answer is one plus one equals two. Okay, and that's why two is appearing on screen, but what's actually written is that for function. Now, that's an example of a function because I used a keyword. If I did it in a formula way, it would look like A2 plus B2, still starting with equals A2 plus B2, and that would do the same thing, but sometimes functions are more effective when referring to multiple cells uh, within the spreadsheet as well. But it's these equations that give power to my spreadsheet because they allow for calculations to be automated. Okay, and you can see all of column C would be formulas. Okay, and so it's doing the tallies of all the numbers in column A and column B automatically for me, saving me a lot of time and doing all those calculations. And calculations can be obviously a lot more complex than just simple additions there, but that's a real power of spreadsheet software too. The next area then is that of graphical tools. The fact that we can create 
different types of graphs, line charts, and as you can see here on screen, pie charts, which add meaning to the data on our spreadsheet because we can visualize what those numbers actually mean. So this pie chart that I've got on screen right here could be the result of a survey, okay, that I've given out and whether people agree, disagree, or not are actually sure about a question that I've asked. And you can see here that it's very close between the yes and the no's and they can show visually how close that data is. So they say a picture can tell a thousand words. Well, that's the, why we use these graphical tools. They illustrate the spreadsheet's data. So we're not just seeing numbers, we're actually seeing a visualization that can support our analysis, making data more meaningful to us. And then the final area I'll talk about is that of sorting tools. Okay, the fact that even though I put the spreadsheet in a specific way and I've arranged it in a specific way, once my values and formulas start being filled in, I may need to then reorder it so that data is more meaningful to me. So let's say I've made all the students in my class take a test. Okay, I've got them all sorted out alphabetically to begin with, and then I enter in all their results because it's easy to do that when they are in alphabetical order. What I might want to do then is then reorder it based on their results so I can see who came first in the class, that their highest mark is at the top of my spreadsheet with their name next to it, and then it all recedes downwards to who got the lowest in the class at the end. So I can actually rank my students in that class. Okay, so the ability to reorder and sort is another powerful tool within spreadsheets to once again make it easy for me to do my work and make my data more meaningful. Now, that was just an introduction to some of the basic tools of spreadsheets. There's many more and you can get quite deep with your analytical tools within spreadsheets once you start layering these things on top of each other as well and the more complex your equations become too. But it's, it's so powerful at helping us uh, diagnose and understand uh, numeric data, okay, for our purposes. So spreadsheets can also be exported for use with other applications, such as a seat's data being used as a data source for mail mergers within word process software. So I could set up a template in a word process software, okay, and I could it could be that I'm typing up a letter and it will extract from a spreadsheet different people's names from different rows of the spreadsheets and make multiple documents based on the spreadsheet as the data source, making a different document for all the data having the different rows of my spreadsheet, which is a real powerful tool because once again, automation. It's pulling the data from the spreadsheet, inserting it into a Word document, and if I've included people's emails within my spreadsheet data too, it can even automatically email it to multiple different people provided all their data is stored within the spreadsheet. So examples of spreadsheet software link include Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets, and Apple's Numbers, okay? So really, they're fantastic pieces of software when using numeric data. The fact that we can calculate numeric data, we can adjust how the sheet actually looks to make it more colorful, and the fact that we can rearrange it and create graphs and charts to visualize data helps make that numeric data much more meaningful to us as users. So I hope you can see that benefit of using spreadsheet software.